Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's part 3 of the E3632A power supply repair and uh, in the last couple of videos I was attempting repair of the uh, main board on this power supply uh, with varying degrees of findings and results etc so we're going to move on um, in the last video I removed the microcontroller with the intention of replacing it so I'd made up a, a small stencil and I've got my new socket that I want to put on the board uh, there wasn't a socket there before as I mentioned in the last video but I don't really want to solder a new microcontroller direct onto the board in case I have to remove it again or anything like that so the idea is to put on a socket so it fits in just perfectly there's a row of resistors and capacitors along the front here and it just clears them and no more and the good thing about this socket is it's got a series of holes as you can see so that you can actually see the pads underneath um, it's great for uh, uh, blowing the hot air through in order to reflow the pads okay here we go so I've got my socket ready I've got it orientated the right way chamfer at this edge here and the pin one um, uh, which is at the top here ha pin one on these uh, PLCCs is halfway along one edge so I've got that orientated ready I've got my stencil ready now I try to think of a way to hold it onto the board and there's not really enough room around the edges to tape it down so I had an idea to cut a square hole in the middle I'm going to put a little bit of uh, masking tape over the hole which is bigger than the hole like that there and I can press it down onto the board and uh, it'll hold it in place hopefully so I'll go and do that now that should be okay like that there perfect I don't think that'll move much and the idea is I'm going to use a little bit of plastic here just to um, put the paste on. I'm not going to be able to uh, wipe a whole load of paste down in one go like I normally do. I'm just going to have to dab this on a bit at a time where I can get access. And the problem with that might be that the paste goes down through the holes and underneath. Hoping that doesn't happen. So we'll give that a bash now. I'm using um, leaded paste just for the lower temperature I don't really want to use my normal GC10 that I use in my production runs because it's just a bit uh, too high a temperature and I'm not really sure what sort of temperature these sockets can can accept I don't want to burn them so here we go there we go time to lift it off and see what it looks like Uh, it's a bit too thick yeah this edge down this right hand side here is perfect but the top edge and this left hand edge not too clever might get away with it if I take a sharp knife and just clean between the pads so we'll see what happens there Well, we'll lay on the socket and see see what happens. Seems to be alright. Right, I think we're ready to try and reflow it. Well, here we go. 250 degrees C and 50 on the airflow on my 861D. And I'll try that. It's 
slowly, it's almost like two or three pins at a time. There we go. Well, that's it reflowed up. I had to touch up some of the pads uh, behind, so I just managed to get the soldering iron down through some of the holes. Um, I had two shorts and a couple of them hadn't uh, reflowed properly. I think the uh, leg of the pin wasn't sitting flat enough down on the board, so it's you know raised slightly. So uh, when it reflowed, it didn't actually um, solder properly. So I had to fix that, and I think I'm good to go. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is replace this LM2925T regulator. I think this one's probably still okay, but I'm not taking any chances. Plus I want to take the opportunity to swap legs 4 and 5 as per my last video where I found a design fault on the board and, four and pins 4 and 5 the wrong way around. So if you want to see more details about that go and play back uh, the part 2 video. But yep, I think uh, with replacing the regulator I'll be able to um, swap the legs on the regulator itself with, to save me cutting any tracks on the board. It's uh, pins 4 and 5 at this end of the regulator here. Okay, I prepared the new regulator and here's what I've done. I can, you can see that uh, I've swapped pins 4 and 5 just by bending the legs and uh, luckily the pads on the PCB, uh, the holes in the PCB here are staggered. It's uh, a row of 3 and a row of 2. It's just an option you can have when you buy these regulators and luckily that's what the Agilent had done in this board, so it enabled me, gave me a bit of flexibility here in order to bend the legs, uh, the, the 4 and 5, to basically swap them over. So I've got my row of 3 and my row of 2 at the back there, so I'll solder that into place now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is a good idea from one of the persons that commented in the part 2 video saying that uh, somebody had a problem with the reset line, the, boat, the power supply not starting up properly and it was because the weak pull up resistor inside the microcontroller itself wasn't quite enough in pulling up the signal to 5 volts when it's not being pulled low by the open collector output of the regulator. So I'm going to fit a 4K7 resistor there um, from basically the reset line as it goes into the microcontroller and to, to a 5 volt supply. So I've spotted a, a, a suitable 5 volt supply nearby uh, on a decoupling cap on around one of the ICs so I'll be able to pick that up there and the R45 right next to the um, IC socket is the reset line on one end of the R45 so I'll be able to do that there so I'll go and solder that resistor in now and as you can see if you look a bit closer at the board here I've had a little bit of progress and I've been doing things off camera a little bit so I'll just recap on what I've done and where we've got to I just started to lift the microcontroller and put it in a socket. Well, I actually went ahead and did the uh, ASIC as well and uh, powered it up. I bought a brand new microcontroller, I bought a brand new ASIC, and alas, powered it up and just is exactly the same. Getting activity on the buses, and but nothing on the display of the, the power supply. So I started probing around and again just looking at all the I.O. and there's nothing that would seem to inhibit the microcontroller from running properly. And But looking at that, the buses were active as I showed you in the last video. So I began to suspect that maybe the actual OTP ROM was at fault. 
and unfortunately I've searched high and low and I cannot find a hex file or a bin file that somebody's got for the E3632A. However, um, I was able to find via the EEV blog forums somebody had posted the firmware um, for the E3631A power supply which is very similar architecture to the 32A um, but has different outputs thinking because the architecture was very much the same the same Reiki controller, the same ASIC and looking at the two schematic diagrams for the two power supplies the CPU sections, although the boards are completely different the CPU sections were very very similar if not identical so I thought I think they're using the same or based on the same code so I went ahead and put the OTP in its socket as well and I burned a new PROM I'll show you how we did that in a minute and let's just see what happens so looking at the display here all digits on goes off look at that just turn out the light here, maybe you can see it a bit better. We have a display. It's currently saying output off. I can't believe it. We're still showing an error, but that's not surprising. I am using the, the, the firmware for a for a different power supply, but this is absolutely encouraging to see this now. So I just have to dig a little around now and see if I can find the software. I'll just turn it off for a second. So I think I just need to dig around now a bit more and see if I can locate the software for the E3632A. Now unfortunately on the E3631A the reason there's probably firmware, firmware available for that power supply is because it's socketed the 3632A in this case is not socketed so it's not so easy for anyone to just go and lift the OTP out of socket read it, send the file to me and stick it back in it's not quite as easy as that however I have got one person I'm hoping to get the firmware from and we'll see what happens there so back to how I actually went ahead and managed to burn the new prom there's a little bit of a story behind that so let me take you to that procedure and uh, I'll show you what I did so as you can see over the years I have actually acquired a few different programmers some of them purchased some of them homemade and I thought I've got to have something that can program the 27C 2001 surely so I had a look at my box here uh, the QLS a nice little programmer mainly aimed at PICS uh, and I've got a couple of them actually uh, but this one doesn't support a 27C 2001 obviously so I went straight to these two here I do actually prefer the Mini Pro it's a great little programmer everybody needs to have one of these I've used this one quite a bit to program EEPROMs and that sort of thing and it works great however with the 27C 2001 I came across a problem it was started to read the original ROM as a test and it would abort halfway through with an error and it just wasn't happening with that so whether there's some bug in the software or not I don't know so I put that one to one side and then I've got this G540 the Genius G540 which I actually got before the Mini Pro and I used to use this one and the software doesn't seem to work under Windows 10 it just throws up an error now both of these are if you google the errors that I was getting everybody else's or a lot of people are receiving the, the same errors as well so I mucked about updated the software etc etc and I just wasn't getting anywhere so I gave up on that so I thought wow what am I going to do I've got all these programmers and no way to program it so I actually went back to um, one of the oldest programmers that I've got and here it is it's my Dataman S4 uh, this is the unit uh, I'll link it down below actually this unit here I actually repaired and refurbished in a, an older video uh, two or three years ago now um, and luckily it does support the 27C 2001 and I had to make use of a PLCC adapter here and uh, 
slotted it in, selected the, the, the right OTP on it and the configuration and it loaded up the S4 software on my Windows 10 PC perfect, ran like a dream and I was able to read and write to the S4 and, and the most importantly program, burn the new OTP on the programmer here. It wasn't quite as uh, plain sailing as that the first OTP that I burned I bought two of these and the first one I burned didn't work on the power supply and I started to think wow What's going on here with this power supply? It's uh, not the PROM. I was thinking that uh, you know, I'd burned it correctly. So I loaded back up the PROM back into the S4 and round about location 2000 in memory on the PROM is where all the action starts. That's where a lot of the uh, machine code sits. And comparing that to the bin file which I'd originally sent to the S4, it offset by about three bytes for some unknown reason. So, like I said, I bought two, I stuck in the second one, rechecked all my steps, burned it, compared it, perfect. It, all the action starts at 2000, so that's when that's when I ended up putting it in the power supply, and as you've seen earlier, it's worked no problem. So that's it for this video, I'm afraid. I'm really stuck now until I get the firmware for the E3632A. I've got one person I'm hoping on. Uh, who has a E3632A and uh, with a bit of luck they'll take they'll make the effort to uh, provide me with the firmware um, until then thanks for watching